financial statement audit report. Uh, on page eight, this is our independent auditor's report. Um, this is kind of the, the main report uh, of this. Um, in the first paragraph there it says, um, we have audited the accompanying financial statements, um, and it talks about the December 31st, um, 2014. That, that's the period we'll be auditing. Uh, the next section is just its management's responsibility to present fairly <coughs> the financial statements. And the third paragraph states that it's our responsibility to express an opinion on the financial statements. And then on page nine is where we give our opinion. Um, so in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present in all material respects the financial position of Island Transit. So that's a clean opinion on the financial statements. But we do want to point out the next paragraph, there is an emphasis of a matter. Again, that's regarding the note 11 and the prior period adjustment that we talked about um, in the management letter the majority of that coming from the sales tax receivable um, going <coughs> on to the financial statements. Um, and, and that's really the meat of the, of the report. Some of the other items just talk about uh, what will be included in the report. So th this is just the draft report that when the report comes out, it will include the MDNA statement of net position, statement of revenues, um, expenses and change in that position, the cash flow, and then the notes to the financial statements. Is so that right, why on the printed uh, documents, each page it says not disclosable under RCW 4256? Yeah, this is just a draft. Okay. Uh, and then when the final report comes out, comes out on our website, it will include our report and then all these items that were prepared by the transit. Um, these, so the entire financial statements will be embedded <coughs> into this report and it will be published on our website. And these are the reports um, that we were talking about the review of the financial statements. These are the reports we're talking about getting the review. Approximately when will that be uh, posted? Uh, available for the public to review? So um, it, it's either going to be tomorrow or Monday. So we're shooting, we're shooting for tomorrow. Okay. Um, have to make those two little adjustments within that one document uh, with, some, uh, with the time frame associated with that. Um, as you can see, the accountability audit report already is dated for tomorrow. <coughs> um, and so as long as there isn't any delay in our processing, it'll be tomorrow. However, at the latest, it would be Monday. Yeah, and certainly next week, people will have access to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, by next week, definitely. And then the last, the last page is, just talks about our, our office. Um, is there any questions about the financial report? I'm sorry, not. I don't know what I'm not getting, but so on the sales tax receivable, where we needed to report that as an asset, so every budget that I've seen, we I mean, we obviously have to budget in the sales tax or we wouldn't have any. <coughs> so how I, I'm not understanding I don't understand where that's not showing up because it's our only real source of income outside of grants so we couldn't have done a budget without, without it yes yeah, so the sales tax comes in um, it's it's um, earned I don't know if you use the word uh, earned um, in the you know the county collects it but it doesn't get remitted to the transit for approximately two months. And that two months, the transit can needs to um, present that on their financial statements as a receivable. So that same two month period will be on every um, every year. So this was a catch up. Yeah. So yeah. this and actually receives the prior period because you, you're basically monitoring that. So your revenues annually are, are accurate. However, it's the accrual of those revenues and, and, and being able to stay on top of that. So each year, um, you know, we thoroughly discussed this with um, Paul, each year there'll just be a small adjustment, kind of just catching up on, on the difference um, from the prior year to the current year's sales tax receipt. And the alternative, the county can get that money to us with that. That's not enough. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> just um, recognized at the time. Yeah. Right. So. And that's, you know, pretty standard across. It would be nice to get it in the week. But, um, all right, so there's no other questions. We'll go back to the, um, the first document, which is the exit conference document. And just some required communications here. Um, there were no uncorrected. Oh, yeah. Um, so, in the section financial statements required communications on that first page, um, there were no uncorrected misstatements in the audited financials. Um, everything that we brought up, any small little um, detail and any of the larger items, were corrected by the transit. And there were no material misstatements in the financial statements corrected by management during the So those are both very um, positive things on the bottom end. I really would like to point out that, um, you know, Paul made every correction that we identified, even if it being the, the littlest thing. He, he really made sure that the, funny, the ending financial statements were, um, were uh, corrected to every, every little thing that we did. So. We really want to spend on that as well. So, really, the bottom line is we're making good progress. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. we would definitely yeah. agree we're with going that. Going in statement. the right direction. Mm -hmm. Any other questions by any of the board members here? Lance, do you have anything? Bruce? Uh, if there are no further questions, we do staff. Have a little bit more. Oh, you do? We're we're almost almost there. There. <laughs> <laughs> Right. On the on the next page of that uh, of that document, we do identify anytime there's status of prior audit uh, findings. There was a three finding, so the status of prior audit findings. I'm on that same document that uh, the original document is the second page. Um, so there we're saying resolved, resolved, and then partially resolved in payroll because we, there was a management matter, there was improvements made. However, just uh, continue to make a couple adjustments within that oversight review and adjustments in the contract language. Um, so recommendations not included in the report. Management letters are not included in the audit report. They're referenced in the audit report, but they're not included. And then the exit items we discussed with management, uh, they are in writing for you on that last page, and, and Michelle discussed them both. Um, that's to, to the extent that we covered those items, or more the housekeeping items. Um, so yeah, it was a very, um, very good results for the transit, making improvements in all the different areas that we were, that we were reviewing. So um, a very good audit outcome. Uh, report publication, we will be looking to get this out. Um, I'm shooting for tomorrow, but it might be Monday, just for a couple of weeks now. So it'll definitely be out by next week. Um, audit costs are approximately recorded, but there was some back and forth working. Anytime there's some financial statement uh, items, it does take a little bit of rework and, and double checking. And so there was a little bit of increased cost um, associated with this review, um, just to ensure that we are all on the same page and have an accurate financial And so customer service survey will come out to the transit. We do really appreciate in getting any feedback on ways we continue to improve our process, things that work well, and things that we can change. So I encourage you to fill that out. Your next scheduled auto will be conducted, um, I guess, later on this year. Approximately. Uh, uh, does the same time frame work well for the transit? Approximately November. October, November. November. That would be the 2015. That would be 2015. We'll follow up on the management letters. and. So sometimes with accountability, we do have to go into the next year um, to identify what changes were made or controls are associated with that current year. So, uh, but the report will be based on fiscal year 15. So it's, it, it's for a better process to have it late in the year that you're monitoring that. But it seems like you're coming in like a year and three quarters or three quarters of a year after the audit period. Yeah, okay. yeah with our audit cycle, um, so currently we're at a number of school districts, and then we get into the um, uh, more of the larger audits, the CAFR. So it has more to do with your. It's schedule. more of the audit yeah. cycle, but then also to give the transit some time. We're just reporting this out to you now, and so we're going to come back, and we don't expect this to be resolved tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, there will be a little bit of, of uh, things to work on, so we'll be back um, later on in the current year to cover, cover the period. And in addition, the. Um, the transit's financial, annual financial report to our office is not due until um, the end of May. Mm -hmm. So um, it would we typically audit after that time period, but yeah. June and July and August are, with, with our single audit deadline is busy for our office. So yeah. we'll get, get you in after, after 
never seen a lot of deadline. Yeah, but we are open for different audit cycles. Yeah. I mean, sometimes entities that want to get right out of the gate and finish their financial statements early, there's not too many of those, especially with gap entities, but um, those can fall into April, March, April timeframe, but that's a tough timeline for a lot of entities to try to complete their financial statements a couple of months early. And then I noticed here on your uh, concluding comments uh, for the reporting of the publication that uh, people can sign up for convenient service. Yep. This web page here that's posted. Yep. Any of the public can know we're not going to be taking any questions mm -hmm. or, or acknowledging or responding to any comments. Um, but that is um, the portal.sao.wa.gov slash S A O P O R T A slash login dot A S P X. And it's really it's easy to find on our website. So if you don't ever find our website, yeah. you can you can easily find where you can sign up for subscription services. Yes. And you can uh, sign up for you know specific entities, um, specific types of entities, um, to be able to get reports right right as they come out. Then on the last page, um, the approximate cost of that next audit, we're trying to separate out what's associated with the actual audit and what's travel costs. We're, we're trying to separate those out more. So the actual audit costs are around $21,400 for the next audit. But with travel, um, we're estimating that the travel costs associated with mileage and time in the travel, that's around 6000 At times, in the past, those dollars were always lumped together, but we're trying to be more transparent on what the costs of the audit are associated with financial accountability work and what's actually just travel associated. So we look for ways to reduce that as much as possible. We try to find, uh, we'll utilize auditors that are in closer proximity to the transit or other locations. And uh, we are also looking for more ways to uh, increase efficiencies within our audit process, maybe perform more work from our office so that we can reduce that travel expense. Just want to give you a projected estimate as to what that means. Do other, this is completely unrelated, do other states audit your department or how do you audit your, yourself? So not, uh, well, other states, yes. So we have a peer review and, and every three years we have a peer review. And so we're due actually this year, they'll be in um, in July, I believe. So every three years they come in and select a number of our audits, a sample of our audits, and then perform an extensive review to ensure that we're meeting standards um, for our financial statement audits. Who's they? That would be, um, I'm going to misquote the organization, but it's the national, um, uh, I, I don't have a quote about me, but um, it basically it's a, a national organization that establishes. So we, um, we lend auditors, um, you have to be nominated and then you get part of a group. Uh, there tends to be a 10 person team on each um, audit review. And so each state is on cycle uh, for, for a review and they generally only take one new person a year. So the other nine have to have already performed a review or some sort of equivalent. And so it's a 10 person team of other auditors from other states and other federal agencies that are part of this team that comes in and reviews our work. So the government's auditing itself. Uh, in other states, <laughs> they're independent. Um, so I mean, we have no authority over our audit team. Is that the end of the uh, That is the that end. Is <laughs> <laughs> we do appreciate, we would like to say thank you to everyone here at the Transit, um, all of you, uh, for your assistance throughout the audit process. We really appreciate uh, your assistance and, and thank you for your time today. And I, I would just like to add on to that too. Um, you know, we've, the last couple of years we've worked through some pretty significant issues, but everybody at the Transit has been so forthcoming with information and helpful to every request that we've had and very um, open to, um, you know, our suggestions and making changes. And we, we do really appreciate um, the, the, the timeliness of all, of all of those responses. And I'm appreciated working with, with the transit staff. It's, it's been a pleasure to work with you all, really. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, Ken. <coughs> we got good people here. Robin, Ken, Sean. You know, I think they, they all are committed to really creating facility here to do the service for the community and I, I don't see that by the end. And there's still some things that we're really working on that we're going to keep to improve. Well, a mutual... Yes, you can talk about it. <laughs> uh, a mutual thank you as well that I know sometimes it feels adversarial when the audit team comes 
said that I always look at it as a chance to learn and improve your organization. And so I'm just appreciative of your sharing your talents and insights with us so that we can do a better job. I mean, that's, I know that's what your goal is. It's not to come in and be heavy handed. And, uh, but it, it, you can't always see yourself the way an outside eye can see you. And so very appreciative of your lending of your talents to us as well. Okay, and with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Oh, second. Is that a motion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a motion by Mr. Johnson and Bruce. The uh, adjourn this meeting. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? The record shows that we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.